What's up, everyone? And this is Next Level Thinking. Afternoon, afternoon. I'm here for another episode of Next Level Thinking. Hope everybody's doing well. I want to have my special guest today by the name of Tony Panico. Awesome, awesome. And of course, it's your host, Chris Holmes, bringing in great inspiration and much more. So I had you on here before, so they know a little bit about you, but I want to dive into like uh, a little bit of what's happening relevant today in the present day. So how are you doing with everything going on in this pandemic? I know that's on everybody's mind. Give us some positive energy. Well, I, I fortunately, I got my second shot about 14 days ago, so I should be okay now. I had a uh, vacation planned in February, which I was able to switch to the end of April. So now I'll be able to go down and enjoy myself for a week down in Williamsburg, Virginia, uh, nice. with my wife, who was getting her second shot on uh, April 13th. So she'll be okay too. Thank God. Uh, that's good to hear because I know like a lot of things have been going on. And I, it's so very important to just take care of yourself. If like, if anything, these <laughs> I can say the year, a year and a half, and I, what I think has been like a real big focus on taking care of yourself. Because I, for the longest, uh, even I have been guilty for this. We were like, oh, we're I'm okay. I don't have to worry about all that. I'm <laughs> mucho macho man, and I, nothing's <laughs> going to phase me at all. And then it's like a reality check. So it's important to take care of yourself. So along this journey of this, can you tell us three uh, three reasons why it's important to take care of you? Because I think a lot of times that's uh, what we forget to do in our busy lives, especially in business and much more. But uh, go ahead. And, uh, well, you know, um, for me, taking care of myself is important. Uh, number one, because um, I like to be an independent person. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, independence requires us to be able to uh, take care of our needs both presently and for the future. So, you know, that's that that's real important to me. Uh, you know, secondly, I'm a married dude, have been married for, for oh, 38 years now. Oh, wow. and Ooh, that's some lessons, Sonny. <laughs> <laughs> As tough as I am, I can tell you she's a lot tougher than I am, okay, uh, to put up with me. But, you know, my, it's very important to try to keep her happy and to do the things that make sense for her as well. Correct. And, of course, the third most important thing, and some people might actually make this number one, depending. Okay. But uh, we've got three sons and a daughter and a granddaughter and that's family and uh nothing's more important than family if you know what i mean almost definitely because they're going to be in from the beginning to the end and that's <laughs> the bloodline <laughs> that's true that's true cool 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 yeah that is all a great value especially with the family because uh that's who we grow up with even though we may go on through our bits and differences and much more family's going to be there with you so we got to know how to take care of each other and much more and then be there for the, the long terms because that's the most important, especially Absolutely. Like how you were talking about with you being a married man. And for who, how many years is that again? 38. <laughs> Lord have mercy if I do that. <laughs> we've, been together for, we've been together for 40 years, actually. We met in 1980. Like I said, I'm I'm a sponge soaking up some great information all back. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that's just my honesty when it comes to that. That's, that's uh, very beautiful. So um, even more, when it comes to business, uh, what is one thing that catches your attention? Because I know in the news, it's been showing like a lot of these big businesses going bankruptcy and much more because they wasn't really prepared for something like this. And it's like that it blindsided them. So by watching all like these major corporations and businesses that you thought would be like here forever, it's now just sad. It. <laughs> well, it, it, it certainly, uh, to me anyway, it certainly brings to the front the need to stay uh, current as far as things like technology goes, mm -hmm. uh, and as far as looking 
on a constant level with things like supply chains that you might need for your business. Because so th- th- I think that's where the real breakdowns have come down. Uh, those businesses that have been able to bridge those two gaps, I think, have survived. But the businesses that haven't been able to probably haven't or have had to go into very, very deep debt to, 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 to keep their doors open. Yeah, and that is like uh, the biggest thing, too, because like the unexpected and going to huge debt, because now you got to wor- worry about overheads, uh, payroll and much more. And speaking of payroll now, this is like crazy out of American history. The government dished out uh, three checks <laughs> and then like, I think, two big packages to kind That's of bail. Right. Yeah, to help out businesses like <laughs> If we get a fourth one, I'm going to be like, well, what's really going on? Like, it's something we- <laughs> I mean, well, I'm glad to see that they're giving it to the people and they're not just putting it in their pocket. Mm-hmm. OK, I, I hate to say it, but I, I don't have much uh, I don't have too much trust in, in the politicians and I don't care what side we're talking about. <laughs> OK, uh, it's it's I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with that. That's a very dangerous game to play because like you're putting your future of your business in the hands of somebody else that may know nothing about you, no kind of knowledge and much more. And you're like, OK, I think this is the best decision. Wait, wait, you don't know nothing about what I like. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I'm not too favored about that. Uh, um I want to key a little bit more on the the importance of adapting. So especially nowadays, mm-hmm. like we used to be in these offices all the time. Now, of course, we're getting a little bit back into that, but it was a huge reality check when they were like, "Okay, we're having a meeting. Uh, we can't go in the office. Mm-hmm. Oh, so we're going to do Zoom." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, you know what? Though no, I'm, um, I think a lot of businesses have probably come to realize that they could save a lot of money, not by cutting employees, by, but by cutting them the amount of real estate they need. Oh, that is really okay. huge because a uh, corporate office, like what, thousands or like even just rent one little well, space. I have a daughter who's uh, in a big corporation and now, which will remain unnamed, but, you know, she's been able to stay home and do work from home four days a week since this thing started. And what they're finding out is she actually gets a lot more work done from home than she does from the office. That's number one. But number oh, yeah. two, and even more importantly, uh, she's saving gas money and everything else because it takes an hour each way. And she's home when her daughter gets home from school. Oh, big plus. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And, and you know, so, and the other thing, and as far as the company's concerned, she's getting all the work done. Uh, they don't really need that office that she sits in. <laughs> <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, now you're going to have people being like, hmm, do we really need to hold this office space? I mean, exactly. we get, and they were much more efficient. You just said the right word, efficiency. Uh, The other thing is from from the boss's point of view, what a nice way to be able to put your eye on how efficient your employees are. Mm -hmm. Because now they're all, you you know, you're seeing them in a different light. You're seeing which ones are producing and which ones aren't. Especially when you can't really watch them all the time. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> <They're at home. laughs> yeah but you, you what you can watch is what they're accomplishing mm-hmm. you know and uh, more and more i think uh, in a lot of work i mean you know unless you're doing physical work uh, as far as office workers are concerned most of that is is on a computer you know and uh, there's nothing you can't do on the computer at work that you can't do at home exactly and i know on a previous episode you were talking about how you were generating like a huge and like very high end leads and much more to help uh, mm-hmm. progress any person to like a way a higher level. Um, yes. But 
for like a person who doesn't actually own a business? Like mm -hmm. what can they do now in these times to maximize? Because we have technology all around it. And I know a lot of times, uh, especially these podcasts and minds and much more, but mm -hmm. I know it's just sort of like business. Like, no, you can do the same thing too in your own personal life. So stress, uh, shed the light on like what they can do in their own personal life to take advantage of uh, these resources and much more. Well, in, in your own personal life, the opportunity to meet new people through your friends. I mean, I'm gonna give you a for instance, okay? I mean, uh, I use LinkedIn a lot myself. I don't know about anybody that's watching us, but I'm inviting people, I might invite 20 or 30 new people every week to join me with LinkedIn. Uh, now I know my wife uses uh, Facebook mm -hmm. and it's amazing you know, we have fam I give you we have family members and stuff that we don't get a chance to see, but she at least can keep in contact with them on Facebook. And as far as friends, you know, her her group has just grown and grown and grown. Uh, uh, just, you know, just by by in by networking, if nothing else. Yeah, and that is like it's like everything is at the palm of your hands nowadays, especially. <laughs> I remember like I mean my grandma had to laugh and just there was times where you had to wait till you got to the actual phone or go mm -hmm. like call the collector or better uh -huh. yet, it'd be like, um, someone just beat me. <laughs> so let me try to get some phone. <laughs> they contact. Or here's another fun one. Like in school. When we didn't have all these cell phones, I experienced a little bit too. But like, yes, meet me at the mall at this exact location at this time. Like, oh. okay, I will. And all of a sudden, you're there, like, where's John? Where is <laughs> right. right. Well, yeah. I mean, it's just it's it's giving us a, a, so more many uh, more ways to communicate. Now, of course, I think some people have a difficulty because the, the, they haven't. Uh, learned how to communicate properly, maybe. Mm -hmm. So that's also something a person needs to think about if they're looking to grow, if they're looking to grow a business or they're looking to grow personally, okay, is is learning how to communicate. Uh, and, you know, there are plenty of uh, assets out there that you can use that will help you with that. Mm -hmm. And it's... It's funny you mentioned that because it reminds my grandma said, closed mouth, don't get fed. Like <laughs> your biggest breakthrough, your biggest client, your biggest next adventure or travel or much more can be right in front of you. But because you keep your mouth, it never happens. That's and right. Communi communication is like the fundamental thing, I believe, of everything. I mean, even with Egyptians or like any kind of like culture, like writing, you had to communicate somehow. That's right. That's right. And, you know, I mean, people don't realize it, but, you know, writing has, goes back over 5,000 years in human civilization. It's more than that. And, uh, you know, especially if you look at uh, artwork, I mean, you know, there's artwork that goes back 10,000 years. I mean, it's, 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 it's pretty crazy. Yeah, we have definitely progressed a long time. So it's just building on top of each other. It just goes back to communications, everything. Uh, just kind of on a fun note, just imagine, let's say there's a gunman behind you and I don't know how to communicate and I'm over like this. <laughs> You're looking at me crazy like, what? <laughs> yeah. You're not able to tell the person that they're on the warning somebody's behind you with a gun. So Right. So you got communication, but I also want to dive into this next because I think it just flows with the relationships. And this is going to sound like the uh, like the thing everybody hears all the time, but it's so important. Like it's all about who you know. The power of relationships is very impacting. I have a good friend uh, by the name of Chip Baker. He mentions on this one a lot because like your relationships with people can get you through the door so many to doors you never could open on your own. That's absolutely so, true. Mm -hmm. Absolutely true. Um, and, but, you know, part of that is you've got to maintain that relationship, which means that you need to stay in contact with those people on a fairly regular basis. Uh, I can tell you, um, I, I, I put together something 
about 25 years ago, and uh, I call it Poor Richard's Process, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if you ever heard of Poor Richard, uh, but Poor Richard is a book. It's called actually Poor Richard's Almanac is what it's called. And it's written by uh, Ben Franklin. And it, Google it now. <laughs> all right. And in it are hundreds of little sayings like, you know, early to bed, early to rise makes men healthy, wealthy, and wise. So what I'll do is I'll send a little note to someone that I, you know, to a friend, and I'll add one of poor Richard's little uh, sayings at the very top. Hmm. And then yeah. as part of my little note to him, I'll refer to it and say, hey, maybe we should try and do that together. Or maybe you and I should get together and talk about that a little further. <laughs> and uh, you'd be surprised how it works. And for the audience, I'll see if I can get this into view. I think this is the book, right? Is that there it is. That's it. Yep. That's there exactly you go. it. Or Richard Almanac. My buddy, Ben Franklin. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And, you know, the, the other thing that I always tell people is what you want, especially when it comes to business, if you're looking to find new clients, what you want your friends and your good clients to do for you is you want them to actually introduce you to Ooh. someone makes life so much easier. Yeah. You know, I don't I don't just want a referral. I don't want a name and a telephone number. That's not what I want. No. I want an introduction. And you know, that is 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 worth a million dollars. And I can't tell you how many times I've had people do it for me and it's 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 kept my business growing for the last well, since 2007. And that's very empower I mean, empowering and impacting because you actually establish a relationship. You know the person. Well, versus, sure. Like you were saying, like, here's a referral. And you're like, OK. So if I call <laughs> this person, you know, be like, hello, this is uh, Chris. Who's Chris? Right. <laughs> I don't know. The Chris who? Well, oh. <laughs> that's right. Whereas if, you're, if your friend calls us for his friend and says, Hey, you know what? You ought to talk to this guy, Tony, because he might be able to help you. Duh. Now when I call him, they, they'll listen. You know what I mean? And yeah, now it's going to go like, like, who is this, Chris? Oh, you know what? Anthony did mention you. So, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of, yeah, go ahead and tell me a little bit of details. <laughs> it's a complete different interest. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly right. And uh, part of the problem with a lot of businesses is, they don't even have a system to stay in contact with their clients. I think you hit the nail on the coffin because so many businesses, and I'll even take it fall for this too. I'm learning, like I'm always a student, is like having a system in place that does stay in contact. What I do notice, and a lot of the people I looked up to done um, have done, is that exactly because they're always in contact, checking in, like, "Hey, happy birthday." Hey, I haven't heard from you. Is there anything we can help you out with? Just little, these little things go a long way. Listen, I, I can tell you every, at least once a month, I'll get a call from a guy and he'll say to me, man, don't you ever stop contacting me? You've been contacting me for 10 years and I, this is the first time I needed you. I go, well, wait, <laughs> what could I say? <laughs> See, look, I mean, consistency, because you never know. No. It, it, never know. And, and and just imagine you could have had, like, your biggest breakthrough, but you quit too early. You don't want to do that. Hey, listen, I, I'm wearing a shirt today. I don't know if you can see it or not, but I've got a, I'm, I, I got, I got a, I've got something in my way here. But oh, on it, it says, oh, here it is. It says Gladstones. Mm -hmm. Okay. The Gladstones is a restaurant in Malibu. Okay. The first time I went there was, I'm going to say, 1996 or 7. Okay. And whenever I'm out in the Malibu area, I never not stop at Gladstones. Now, go to spots. 
Right. Now, it's changed over the years. There's no question about that. But I always got to stop by. And, and I think I bought this shirt that I'm wearing here in 98 or 99. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I mean, the, 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 it's important for businesses of all kinds, no matter what they are, you know, to give their customers a way to tell other people about them. And if you don't do that, you know, it's really hard to grow. Nothing beats having somebody else talk all kind of great words about you. You're like, oh man, this person was great. I mean, you should check them out. They did this. They ran into the forest. They saved a monkey and some kids. <laughs> so, <laughs> wow, that! <laughs> like, oh, he did all that. Yeah, he did that. And then he just he donated all this to them. Like, well, I need to check this guy out. Yeah, you know, yeah. Well, the, the funny thing is about Gladstones. The guy who who started Gladstones was actually a Hawaiian, uh, what do you call it, um, surfer. Okay. Okay. And in the, he opened this place like in the 1940s. And, uh, you know, he, 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 introduced, he introduced us, you know, a lot of people to a whole different uh, type of food and everything else because it was all Hawaiian. Ooh, outside the box. All right. And um, <laughs> it's kind of cool. Hey, that's what it takes. And then I'm, I'm guaranteed he had a great personality too, which made it so welcoming. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. So with all this and much more, let's say, because this is a, actually a very common thing. A person is going through the pandemic much more and they're having a hard time with sales. Sales have dropped. You know, they probably were looking at the news and all that and they panicking and wondering what they can do. If you can just provide just a little bit of a guidance to kind of bring a peace of mind to some people, what can they do to kind of get the ball back running? Well, one of the first things I tell somebody is you've got to be able to describe for yourself as well as for anybody who might want to help you what a client looks like meaning you know is there an age group is 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 your product more appealing to women or to men uh, or to kids uh, is is your product uh, more related to a wide range of economics as far as people are concerned? Or is it something that's more narrowly described? Uh, you know, and you've got to have a way to describe what your, your client looks like. Once you can do that, then the opportunity to be able to build a list of people or families or households that are within your geography becomes doable. And then the only other question is, how do you want to make contact? And frankly, today, I mean, email is probably the, one of the best ways. Or texting is becoming very popular. And, and I'll get just, just from some st statistics, when you send out a thousand emails, you probably will get about a hundred people to look at it. It's about 10%. Okay. If you send out a thousand texts, you're going to get about 800 people to look at it. Because everybody's walking around with this. All right. Oh, text message. That's okay. right. Now, what, what a lot of people will do is that they'll send a text message out and they'll, they'll, they'll attach their website or something like that. Or they'll attach a coupon, you know, like a $20 off coupon or whatever the case may be. And, but, but the cool thing is, is the more people who see it, obviously, the more results you're going to get. Of course. And then, and, and, and then, of course, then it becomes up to up to you to follow up with those people properly on, you know, anybody exactly. who responds. 
Exactly. That just reminds me, like, you miss every shot you don't take. So right. if you don't take your shot, <laughs> you got the same result you came from in the beginning. That's and, right. And um, I'm glad you brought that up because so many people, are like, they may be afraid to send a text message out there and not give yourself an opportunity. Well, you just pretty much said, like, if you really want to get things rolling, take your shot. That's take right. that first step. Call, um, text, email. Oh, I want you to go a little bit more on email because especially okay. because I want you to uh, go in a little bit more details. The reason why, because I know a lot, especially my age and younger, be like, emails, man, well, nobody uses emails. Now, I know you know that's completely wrong, but I'm just telling you how a lot of us say, like, emails? <laughs> So go a little bit more yeah, they, they, on that. They, yeah, I mean, first of all, you know, the, the, your email is going to get to your phone or to your computer, whatever you're using, or to your to your, you know, if you're just using an iPad or or, or, or something like that, you're going to still get it. Uh, that's number one. Number two, if you design it properly you'll get the the open ratio that you're looking at for, which is about 10%. Now, here's the, 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 the part about email that I think is the most attractive, especially to people just trying to get started, is the costs to do email is only about a fifth of what it would cost if you wanted to send out a, a snail mail message. Hmm. And more people will will look at your email than are going to look at the, your snail mail. So I think it's a pretty good opportunity for people, especially if they, 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 they've got a, a small budget to work with, to use email because uh, the, y y your opportunities are going to be better and it's not going to cost you half as much. Uh, Makes yeah. a lot of sense. And it's funny, I like I had to bring that up earlier, like how a lot of us think around my age range, because it's funny we say that, and then meanwhile we have Apple, a very powerful company, sending emails like every day. <laughs> yeah, you're getting, I mean, if you, you, you're getting emails daily over and over and over and over again. But you know what's kind of funny about that to me is that even though I delete most of them every day, okay? Uh, if I get an email from some somebody, and even though they're emailing me regular, all of a sudden today, I might need that thing or that guy or, or, or that item. Bingo, I'm not, oh, here's my opportunity. I mean, just to give you a for instance, I'm a cigar smoker, all right? Okay. Uh, I have one cigar a day, that's it, all right? But I get at least three emails a day from three different cigar companies. Oh, they ain't found you. They targeting you. Okay. <laughs> that, you know, now, do I answer them? No, I usually delete them. But, it, but probably once a month, I'll, one of them will catch my eye and bingo, I'll place an order. Yep. Okay. And that's really what it's about. It's uh, it's a it, it's about developing the a a business relationship with with people out there that that could be your clients, and doing it in a way that is affordable. That's not going to break the budget. Hey, I agree with you one hundred percent. Got to take that shot. <laughs> So to close this out in a nice little bow, I'll, I'll say this question for last. Okay. I know you hit on this a little bit, but just for the newer people coming in, how do I get the attention of high-end customers? I'm talking about them six-figure and million ones. Now, I know we did a whole episode about this, but just go ahead and high yeah, end sit, people. You gotta sit up for this one. <laughs> All right. Well, one of the things I tell people is, and, and, and if, especially in your age group, You've got to be uh, a little bit knowledgeable about something called data mining. Okay. If you, if you know what data mining is, then you all know that just about everything about everybody that's out there is available if you know how to find it. And just to kind of get a little extra value, quick def define, definition of data mining. 
just to catch these people up a little bit. Well, okay, data mining is like uh, if you have a credit card, okay? If you have a mortgage or own a house, okay? Uh, if you pay taxes, we all do. Okay. <laughs> I, I hate to tell you, but all of these places sell your data. Now, they have to do some things with it to make that, uh, quote, legal. Okay. And they can't, it, it, it's, it's, it's kind of funny, but it's done in a way where there's no name involved it's all by numbers okay gotcha. but here's the thing if you know how to read the numbers and how to unravel it then you can you can find a lot of things about a lot of people pretty easily okay and I'll give you a for instance if you want to find people that are making a hundred thousand dollars a year you can do it if you want to find people who are making $200,000 a year, you can do it, okay? Uh, if you want to find people who are worth 250000 net worth, you can do it. If you want to find people who have a million dollars or more, you can do it. They're like, wait up, man. Like, show me the money. <laughs> right? Wait a minute. If you, want to, if you want to search for specific types of things like, business owners who own businesses that are doing more than 5 million a year in sales or 10 million a year in sales. You can do that. It's doable. And now, I know everybody's watching now and they're like, how, 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 how? Well, <laughs> that's where I come in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, that's where I come in. I can help you to do that. I can show you how to get it done and, and at a very reasonable cost. Uh, you know, now, are there other people out there? Yeah, there are. But for most of the people who are going to be uh, using this kind of service, yeah, you probably want to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. So if you want to find your next high-end customers that kind of speed up some things and get yourself ahead, Go ahead and talk to uh, this guy. You had to make sure because, you know, when you point, the camera's like in reverse. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm finding out. It's reverse. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. So with that, like, how can they contact you? Well, uh, I give them, I tell people, listen, you can either go to my website, which is partnersformarketing.com, and take a look at the website, uh, or... If you want to call me, give me a call. 609-760-1754. Gotcha, gotcha. So one more time, like them commercials, like, and my number again is... 609-760-1754. And awesome. just say, Tony. <laughs> and the rest is history. So thank you again for being a guest on the show as we close everything out. It's your host, Chris Holmes. I always bring you great level guests to help you take it to the next level. And again, I have my good friend by the name of Tony Panico. Awesome, awesome. Make sure you subscribe, share, and much more as we help elevate you to the next level. Peace. Have a great day.